Hello, my name is Jay Simmons. I am a software engineer in the Active Directory team here at Microsoft. I'm here today to demo for you the new Windows Labs automatic account management feature, which is now shipping in Windows 11 24H2 and Windows Server 2025. So as many of you already know, the whole purpose of Windows Labs is to manage a local account regularly rotating its password and storing that password in the in the directory so that if something happens to the device and an administrator can retrieve the credentials for that local account and use them to log on to the, the device now one account that you can manage of course is the built-in administrator account but many customers prefer to create a custom local account brand new from scratch on the device so how do you do that well, there are Intune CSP. There is an Intune CSP that allows you to do this, and there are also some legacy group policy objects, but they're not quite fit for the purpose, and they're a little bit hard to use and coordinate in conjunction with the lapse policy. So many customers asked us to make this a much easier process, and this feature is the result of that. So without further ado, let's take a look here. So what you're looking at is the new uh, automatic account management node in the Windows Labs group policy. Now we're going to go ahead and enable this. You'll see here in the dropdown that you can choose either a custom admin account or the built-in admin account. Uh, we'll mostly focus here on the custom admin account. So when you specify manage a custom admin account and you apply that to the device as part of the along with the rest of the necessary Windows Labs group policy settings or Intune applied settings, what Windows Labs will do is it will create the account on the fly for you. Now this is the the core of the feature. This is the part that meets the 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 main requirement that most of our customers expressed. Now. If we had said manage the built-in admin account, uh, Windows Labs would, would manage the built-in admin account and also apply some additional features, which we're going to talk about. Now, you'll see a text box here that says automatic account name or name prefix. So what is that all about? So if you want to name the account that you've either reused, if it's the built-in admin or the one that we've created for you, you can do that via this text box. So we're going to go Laps Admin and Windows Labs will name the account using that, that text box value. Another item is whether or not you want to have the managed account be enabled. Now, why would this be of, of interest? Uh, many customers have expressed that they prefer to keep these, these Windows Labs managed accounts in a disabled by default state for attack surface reduction purposes. They do this manually. And when they need to use the account for its actual intended purpose, they move the target device into a different OU or they deploy some other script to the device that then enables the account. You now have the capability to enable and disable the account directly from within the, the new automatic account manager policy. For, this, for, the, for the purpose of the demo so far, we'll keep it enabled. There's another checkbox, which is randomize the name of the managed account. Now, why would you want to do that? By default, and certainly in the earlier versions of LAPS, uh, all local accounts that are using a given LAMP policy will always have the same account name. So in the earlier versions, this will be a local account called LAPS admin on all accounts, all devices rather, covered by this policy. If an attack was to determine the name of that account, they would now know which account to potentially attack on all devices in the enterprise. It is a much better idea, therefore, if we rent, somehow can manage, if we can randomize the name of that account so that it's the name of the account is unique per target device. And that's exactly what this checkbox does. If you click this, every time we rotate the password, we will rename the account such that it has a random numeric suffix appended to the name. Um, now, each time the password is rotated, we will do that. So in the, the account name never stay, stays static for long, um, no longer than your password expiry interval. So let's give this, let's take a look and let's give this a run now. We're going to, uh, 
configure the path. Actually, before I do that, let's for fun, let's set a passphrase. Now we'll configure the password back up directory. In this case, we're going to Active Directory. And you can see here that we've now got a the policy worked and it used the base name of the account and it appended a random suffix. And as a, as a side note, we also got a new passphrase. And if we go over here to local user manager, now this is the default view from before I ran the policy. And if I refresh that, you'll see that we now have a brand new account and it is in a certain state. It's, it is enabled because we specified it that way. It has the password that we stored in the directory. Now, another aspect of automatic account management is that the, the, uh, the benefits that earlier versions of LAPS extended to the password on the target account are now actually extended to the entirety of, these, of this account. So if we were to attempt to modify this account in any way, that would fail. So let's just take a look here and we'll try to... Uh, modify the account with a different name, pull name. And you'll see that you get an error because this account is currently being managed by Windows Labs and we don't want anything to happen to it. The goal of this is simply to make sure that this account when that, when needed is, is in a clean state ready for your use. All right, so let's rotate the password and see what that does. I'm going to re-retrieve the password, and this time you'll see that we have a brand new password, but more to the point, the numeric suffix was rotated, so it changed from 554-143 to 255-29. And if I come down here and refresh local user manager, you can see that we also have a change right there. Now, we don't have to add the random suffix if we don't want to, so let's go change that real quick. Uh, we want to say randomize the name of the we're going to uncheck that we're going to disable that we're going to say okay and then we're going to rotate the password and re-retrieve it so you can see now we're back to our base name and it did rotate the password like we like we asked for now you'll recall now obviously when we rotate the password that is the point at which this feature renames the account what, what, ha what happens if we want to disable or enable the account? So we're going to flip it from enabled to disabled. And we're going to rerun the, pass the, the policy. We're going to re-retrieve the uh, password. Now, all we did here is we switched the policy from enabled by default to disabled by default. Now, you'll notice that even we ran the policy, and nothing changed. We still got the same account name. We still got the same password. Let's go refresh the local user manager and see what happened. So the little icon there now indicates that it's disabled, and here it is. And again, if we try to enable this, it's going to fail. Now, so let's go. What else can we do with this? So we'll open up the policy again. What would happen if we, if instead of tell, asking Windows Labs to create a custom admin account, what if we had asked it to manage the built-in admin account? For the most part, except for the fact that we we don't ever create the built-in admin account, it's always there, hence the built-in uh, description. Everything else operates the same. So we're going to start out here with a base name, account name, and we'll keep it enabled, but we won't randomize the account name. And... Now let's re-retrieve the password the, the, from the directory. All right, so you will see that we had the account name changed, but of course you can't tell from just the name if it's a custom account or a built-in admin account, but we definitely got a new password. All right, let's take a look and see down here what happened. You can see that uh, the previous administrator account, the built-in one named administrator is now missing. And there's still a LAPS admin account, but it's now the built-in admin account. Now we can't see that from this tool here. So uh, and 
And if we switch back to saying, let's manage this as a custom admin account, we'll, we'll change the name just to show the transition a little bit better. And then we'll retrieve it. You see it's the new one, new password. And if we come back here and refresh, administrator is back to its original name and we could actually mess with it if we, now if we want. Uh, but now we have a new custom account called Laps Admin New. So most customers will only set these settings once and be done with it. Uh, but you can switch between the modes if necessary, if you really want to play with it. So just to wrap up then, the whole point of this feature is to make it really simple and trivial for IT admins to deploy Windows Labs with a custom admin account on any device without fear of interfering with any other processes. If you configure the target account management and you say manage a custom admin account, because we're creating a, a new custom admin account every time, there's no chance that we can interfere with like OS setup workflows or anything like that. Then if you also want to, you can take advantage of the name randomization or choose perhaps to maintain the account in a disabled state instead of in an enabled state. Now, these are all obviously controllable via policy. Uh, I hope this helps. Um, thank you very much.